So today we're going to look at the uh, Windrose functionality that comes with Vasari 1.1, the Ecotech Windrose, and look not so much at how it works, but how you can mess with it, because that's what we do around here. Um, the Windrose is basically a tool to understand prevalent wind directions in particular locations. It's very sensitive to different things like you know, other buildings that are nearby and ponds and that sort of thing, so it's hard to actually take this stuff too literally for specific locations, but that isn't going to stop us from looking at what we can use this for to actually do just that and make very specific uh, geometry based on a wind rose. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to go from something like this, which is the general windrows information. Here we've got it for Santa Barbara, California, because I kind of like the geometry that comes out of this shape. Um, the windrows allows you to write this geometry back into your Revit model, or your Vasari model, that is. And it's basically just telling you some information about uh, prevalent wind directions. There's a lot of wind coming down from the north. That's the big takeaway message from this. There's also wind coming from the from the west. And again, it's on a very high level generalized information about this particular weather station. But we're going to take this information and we're going to hack up the windrows so that it can actually start generating geometry like this, which is basically reactive to that windrows uh, and takes it and basically just creates your building form from it. So to get into that, we can just start looking at what this Windrose is and what it does and what it doesn't do. So I'm going to basically delete this one for a second. And I'm just going to, I've got a basic piece of geometry here. I've already gone and I've set my location to be Santa Barbara, California. And I'm going to go into the Windrose. And we see this is how it shows up in uh, the Google Maps. And I'm going to show it as a family and it just uh, gives me two different ways that I can instantiate it. This looks very pretty when you have uh, uh, already existing building forms, by the way. So I'm going to put it in there. That's fine. So now I've got my windrows written into my uh, into my Vasari model. I'm just going to hide this thing. I'm going to delete that piece of geometry for now. And you can see that this is actually a loaded family, this piece of geometry. You can find it over here in your project browser. And so what Vasari is doing is it's loading in this very special parametric family and it's writing an awful lot of information to it. And you can see that over here if you select it and look at the properties. Each one of these spokes basically is being written nine pieces of information about um, relative intensity of wind and duration. Uh, for each one of those directions. So you can see here you've got the north northeast section, which if you go over here, you've got north northeast, and so for radius 9, which is going to be this piece that's farthest out here, it's writing a particular piece of information that says that it is 93% essentially of the maximum allowed on that line. So this looks like an opportunity for hacking up data and using it for driving form, which is just what we're going to do. So if you select this, you can edit this family. Again, this is not recommended practice, not what this thing is intended for, but one could if one were so inclined. If you go and you open this up in your family editor, you're going to see that this is a mass. It's a mass family, and it's made up of a number of subfamilies, or a nested family. So this one right here is, if you go into your browser, it's an adaptive component. Oh wait, sorry, that one's not the adaptive component, it's this one, the slice. There's another family over here. So if you look at slice, you can edit that family too. And you can see that this is again one more nested family. So at the core of this thing we've got this nested family that has a whole series of instance parameters and each one of those instance parameters is getting written to by the Windrose application and giving it information about how long or how high or how wide it needs to be for each individual locale. In our situation we've got Santa Barbara. So if I go in here I can start using this to generate my own geometry. So I can select that surface and I can create form from it say and drag it up and let's say I can, let's just do that for now. If I load that back into my Windrose, and I'm going to overwrite the
the existing version as parameter values. I'm just going to percolate through that for a second. So now I've got this big walled city, right? Well, now if I load this whole thing back into my Santa Barbara uh, project, it's going to do the same thing, except it's going to pick up on those same instance values that have already been written to it. So it just took a minute to pause the video. Just There's no trickery involved here, um, except for this trickery, which is that now I've got all of these walls instantiated on my windrows. So if I go back in here, I can start making this a little bit more interesting because I could make the height of this a function of, say, how strong the wind is. So, oops, not that one. I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to give it a parameter too, and I'm going to give that offset a parameter. In fact, let's do this. Let's get it a real thing like that. So now I've got my form, and I'm going to give it a parameter. Call it height. And I'm going to make it an instance parameter. And now I'm going to relate that also to that same radius information. So I had radius 9, and I'm going to say my height is going to be, say it's going to be 100 feet times radius 9. Right? So now I've got 95. Okay, that doesn't really make much difference right now for this guy, but if I load it back into the project, So I get it back into here. Whoops, that was the wrong. I wanted to load it into Windrows. Now overwrite. That's fine. So again, no real change. These guys have been written in. But now if I load it back into my project where I've got my specific location, we're going to see it percolate through all this information once more like so. So now here we have this expression of great big high pieces of geometry for the very strong winds that are coming in from the north. We've got very low walls for the parts where there's very little wind and you know all the things in between. Now that's a, a pretty basic and very very literal way of interpreting this windrows. But you can of course make this as sensitive and uh, responsive to this geometry as you'd like. So now, instead of just having this relatively simplified geometry, let me just close this guy out and close this guy out. Let's look at something a little bit more developed. For instance, here's a windrows that I built up earlier. So this is just in this same session, I'm opening up this earlier Windrows. And what it's got, it has the same idea where I've got, let me isolate some things here. I've got that same idea where I'm extruding out these families here on the edge. But then I am going around and I'm connecting the dots with a bunch of lines here on the edges, which I can also isolate this. So basically I've just created a ring, a chunky ring, around the edge that reacts to each one of the vertices of that extruded form. And it does the same thing. The form goes up, the form goes down, depending on how much or how big the windrows is. So if I take this family, and so now I've still got my windrows sitting in here, just waiting to be told what to do. If I take this same family, where I've got more complicated geometry set up on it, and I load it into the project. It's going to take a little while, it's going to percolate through it. I'll pause. And then I start to get something that's a little bit more interesting. So, now again, this is still pretty literal, but I've also done some things in here where uh, I've added some other instance parameters. Uh, I, no, it's type parameters, I'm sorry. Where here I've got my windrows establishing sort of big walls on the outside of my family and facing the uh, strongest incoming winds. Now, if I go in, I can actually change this so that rather than it being a direct relationship between how far out this is and how high these walls are, I've got an inverse parameter. I'm going to post these families so you can use them if you'd like. And if I go OK, it's going to create an inverse relationship between the strength of the wind and the height of the walls. 
so now I've got sort of a mountain shaped form where the the walls facing the incoming winds are going to be very low the ones that don't have much wind are going to be very high and then I can start editing that thing down with you know other you know you just keep adding parameters um, where you can do things like you can adjust how tall this thing is relative to how high you want your walls to be so I can also change my host scale and that sort of thing but in the end this is a mass and I can do all of the massy things with it like I can go in and I can analyze it I can uh, enable my energy model and whoop, I forgot to add mass floors make myself a little instant building with my energy model and I can start looking at what actually different forms are going to do to my energy consumption and then of course I can go in if I want to and start messing with things like see what happens when I put this thing in different locations so let's say uh, I like this one, St. Thomas and the Virgin Islands. You get a sense of uh, really what, what's going on with the wind res when you go to these places that have very unusual wind patterns. So I think these are the trade winds. There's nothing coming from over here. It's all coming from this side. And uh, it's just sort of fun to sort of go through different places and see what kind of geometry this tool creates. So you can see it pops out on the other end. This is what kind of geometry you get for the U.S. Virgin Islands. You know. And let's do one more. Uh, how about Boston? Less interesting, but it's where I'm from. Go back in. Show his family. And there we've got our Boston one, sort of more amorphic. And you can also just change what the scale of this thing is here. So, say I want a much smaller building. a very small but very tall building and of course the things like the height those are going to be controlled by whatever parameters you hook up for this initial height because you're going to end up with a percentage of this height so in here this guy is set up to be uh, let's see building height default is 100 so say I make my default 50 and I load it back into my windrows and load it back into my family and into my project hmm yeah that didn't really work um, oh I forgot I actually just made it a parameter in the family itself here you can just take your building height and you can set it down to 50 feet 50 feet like so there much nicer now I've got a more compact building. I can control the height. I can control whether it has an inverse relationship to the wind or a direct relationship to the wind. And of course, then I can go in and I can do all of my regular stuff that I can do with the mass. I can see what its gross floor area is, surface area, volume, and so on. And of course, then run analysis is on it. Analyses? Analysis. Anyway, uh, I will post this family so you can play around with it. But uh, the general concept is just that the Windrows uh, uses the information uh, from uh, that it gathers from Ecotech and writes into a regular Revit or Vasari based family so you can do with it and customize it as you see fit